Hey everyone, so this is going to be one of those videos, okay? It's raining new papers every single week, and this paper for string diffusion, it's already one month old. But this real-time generative AI workflow is going to change AI filmmaking as we know it. And this is the worst version that you are going to see, and it's only going to get better. At the end of this video, we're going to go step-by-step step installing stream diffusion and have some fun with it. If you are interested just on the repo, jump straight to this time time but please check the whole video because i want to share more about these new ai agents talk about cs 2024 gen ai with robotics and how everything is coming together at the same time on many fields of generative ai but first on this video i want to go through all the newly released ai agents uh task weaver and microsoft auto Gen studio i did a deep dive on both so i want to share the result with you and we're going to analyze what's the best agent to get our own uh trade show GPT so we can navigate a full convention with just a GPT and while we're there we are going to talk about uh, CS 2024 yeah let's first let's talk about CS 2024 where as many other years I've been blessed to be working at uh, thanks to View Studio this year I work at the Accenture booth setting up next to the Eureka bar and although I can't talk about what was discussed over there because this was for Accenture clients only I was lucky enough to be a fly in the room and witness great conversation from the biggest companies around generative AI. Usually it gets very boring working on these places, but this place was anything but boring for me, as you can imagine. One thing that I can talk about is that there is a lot of investment coming on the generative AI area right now. We, after Accenture had Davos, this public discussion about the future of AI with Sam Altman. And if you didn't watch it yet, watch it to understand how the biggest companies are investing and in using AI right now. Check the full discussion, links on the description. And if we talk specifically about CES 2024, where even the show posters were AI generated, this is the first time where I think the use of AI didn't feel like a pony trick, uh, at least in most of the cases. I think the best example this year was uh, this AI grill, which it has all the right element needs to feed information to AI. Uh, some of the products, uh, I don't know. But at the end of the day, AI power products will become a common thing faster than you can think of. And the reason of that is that the data is going to be more valuable than the product itself since data is going to help manufacturers to create better products on future generations one product that might follow this new trend is the rabbit r1 a product that technically could be just a nap but as many people pointed out it will make any noise if it was just a nap and for 200 dollars you get a beautiful teenage engineer design product which is not a bad deal and to be honest i don't dislike this at all as many people did Maybe because I love good hardware design and I see something else here. Without the Rabbit application, without the software at all, if they make this device open source, I can imagine could replace Raspberry Pi. And that's not a small statement. And on the other side, the software is really good. Now, the founder already revealed that his first prototype was out of the Raspberry Pi. So yeah, leave it open, please. This will be a win-win if you create an open source developer community. Just food for thought. Another area that AI is catching the new generation of routes. We knew this would happen. ChatGPT plus robots. Yes, it's happening. And we've seen a lot of robots in the past at CES. It's just a tradition. But those were dumb robots compared to this new generation. And the reason is that NVIDIA Omniverse is helping to train these robots with synthetic data. And that's the key, synthetic data. In general, in the past, the biggest problems in robotics was supervised training. Every time that you build a new robot, a new configuration has to be retrained in real life scenario. But we already passed that barrier. And now we can create any shape of any robots and create synthetic training data thanks to NVIDIA Omniverse and train 1 million generations in just one day. That's where we're at right now. Those tools are not just available to Amazon or BMW or Mercedes-Benz. These tools are available for anyone with NVIDIA Omniverse. And the reason that I'm excited for this new generation of robots is that for the first time, Time, we're seeing this result of off-the-shelf development tools, literally off-the-shelf components. And look at this, all these companies are training on NVIDIA Omniverse synthetic data, not just Boston Dynamics, everyone. This role, for example, is $100,000, competing directly with Boston Dynamics. But wait for it, these ones are $3,000. Imagine these roles with the power of local AI models. 
Please leave a comment. Should I get one? Let me know in the comments and I'll do it. Now let's move back to AI agents. And if you're following this channel, we are building many versions of AI agents. And one of those is this trade show GPT. It's a swarm of agents that organize information before and after the show. And that's the subject for this new topic, AI agent. So we already discussed that we're not building our own agents from scratch because OpenAI, Google, Microsoft, and Meta are already building something there. And for the Michael, Old, Microsoft just released two of their open source projects, AutoChain Studio and Task Weaver. And they're not competing with each other. If you pay attention, they complement each other. So what I see here is probably what is going to become a combination of the future of what Microsoft Agents is going to be. So let's talk about first about AutoChain Studio, which is the second version of AutoChain. If you got frustrated installing this on Windows, you're not crazy or stupid, it's what it is. It's not Windows compatible. Go figure. It's just the right amount of agents maximizing their capabilities. Too many agents can be a big problem and not enough agents can also be a problem. So it's just about finding the balance. I will say that most of the lack of feedback is not being able to follow the full process and it gets tired at the end or it gets lost. I think I might be wrong, but definitely there is something missing in long-term interaction. Task Quiver on the other side looks the same, but it's definitely not the same. Task Quiver is a task oriented agent. This is a cold first agent framework for planning and executing data analytics tasks. And here's where you see everything taking shape in real time. It's going to be the combination of these two what is going to make it perfect. Agent Studio main goal is communication between agents. In an organization, our agent studio is a manager to manager coordination. And Task Quiver is the actual programmer doing its magic based on the assigned task. So it's fair to say that these two projects are complementary with each other. And if we put them together, they will both achieve their maximum potential. If you want me to make a full tutorial using both Task Weaver and Asian Studio, please leave a comment. Let me know in the comments. I'm curious to know what you want to know about these two actions. Okay, and that's pretty much the secret of the universe. So if you're here for the tutorial, well, you missed it. So yeah, let's go straight to the tutorial. On the first part, we are going to open PowerShell as an administrator, and then you are going to go straight to your GitHub uh, folder. This is mine, and that's where we are going to clone the repo with the git clone command. On this part of the video, this is running in real time, so it's only going to take seven seconds. The next part is going to navigate to the repo, so cd string diffusion, and this is where the fun begins. But before we do that, so one thing I want to make sure is that you have Python 3.11.7. You can check your version with Python dash dash version. And the reason we need Python 3.11.7 is that if you want to install this with other tools, you might have some conflicts. So I highly recommend to get Python. 3.11.7 as the main Python version. So if you already have Python 3.11.7, you can create your virtual environment. And this is only going to take 11 or 12 seconds. And probably this is the only part where it's real time and the other ones I accelerate the whole thing. Okay, so the next step is to create a virtual environment. But before we do that, if you're using the command line, you're going to use the recommended command on the GitHub. But if you're using PowerShell, you're going to use the second one, which is activate.ps1. So if you're following the tutorial, you use the second one. Okay, so once you got the green that B E and B, and now we're gonna go to another check is checking your CUDA version with mbcc dash dash version. And this is where tutorials like this, you know, we suffer for you, so you don't have to go through the pain. And the reason is that the recommended actual version for CUDA is 11.8, not 12.1 some reason probably because most of these cases is for ubuntu cuda 12.1 works but for windows if you're using windows uh 12.1 is not going to work so i highly recommend if you already have the 11.8 you can keep going but if you have the cuda 12 or another version i highly recommend to uninstall cuda and install cuda 11.8 you don't have to restart the computer uh, i already tried it but you need 11.8 i highly recommend to do that 
So if you already have CUDA 11.8, let's start with the installation process, which is going to be Torch Vision for CUDA 11.8. Uh, this whole process is going to take 2 minutes and 14 seconds. The next step is to install Stream Diffusion with pip commands. And this is going to take another 2 minutes and 42 seconds. Or around that. Okay, the next step is going to install Tensor RT extensions. That's another minute and a half. After that, we have to force reinstall PYWIN32. Uh, this is real time playback, uh, almost six seconds. Okay, we're almost there. And now we have to navigate to demo real time image to image. So we do CD that demo real time dash IMG to IMG. And we're going to do the same on the GitHub to follow the commands. Okay, now we have to go another folder inside, which is front end. And now we are going to start running uh, the Node.js installation with npm i. Okay, after that is done, another 10 seconds to run npm run build. And we're done. We're gonna go CD that that to go one folder behind. So now that we are on the root of a real time image to image folder, we are going to do the pip install dash r requirements. And this is going to take one minute and fourteen seconds. Or around that. Okay, so this is the part where it's gonna take 11 minutes and 32 seconds or, or around that. So after we run this command, you probably just keep watching the video and see, you know, the rest of the video. So yeah, this is where, you know, it's kind of boring uh, the installation process. So that's why, you know, we have this long video to watch something at least. Okay, now I'm going to leave you along with uh, the original installation video. So have fun. Okay, I think we got it. So once you got this, we, we're not gonna use the zero, zero, zero. Uh, it doesn't work on Windows. What we do is at 127, so it's uh, the local. Now, here's where I think I have to change the camera setup. Let me stop the recording. Okay, so yeah, that's the problem. I, I, w there was a conflict with OBS, so I had to shoot down OBS. And, but it's okay. So once once you do that, uh, you you have the options. That's my webcam. Let me think about it. Um, Let me show you NVIDIA broadcast with this one on the camera. Background replacement now, so I remove the effect, so it should be fast. So there's no effect. Okay, that's what I want. Okay, and let's change to be a broadcast. That's fine. Okay, that's what I want to show you. And let me take all this because it's gonna screw up with the algorithm. Yeah. Okay. So it's real time. It's just really, really good on real time. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let me remove this. So this is kind of real time. Obviously, there is a delay right now, right? This is the original prompt. Let me just change. <laughs> okay, my favorites. Joaquin Phoenix. Uh, Joker. Yeah. Oh, without the Joker. Without the Joker, without face. Oh, yeah. He scares me to death. He looks like Joaquin Phoenix. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Let's talk. No face painting. This is not like a, the deep fake. The, the, the deep fake are actually bad. It's, it's a better process. It's, this is a different animal. This is like whatever I wanted to do, right? We have to offset the timing. That's another thing to think about. Um, what else? It's kind 
of like cartoonish, right? It is cartoon. Now, this is the worst that you're gonna see. Uh, it's gonna get better and better in faster and faster, obviously. Um, what I'm thinking is uh, with synthetic data, you can train this to be pretty much perfect. And I think that's gonna be the next step. Let's, let's start playing a little bit. Let's see, let's see what we get. Steven, this is funny. <laughs> So doesn't matter, I put it on Steven Spirit. Now that's oh nice it's, it's Steven. This is good, this is good. Uh, what else? Uh, oh, saving Frank Ryan and Tom Hanks, right? And let's go to hold Tom Hanks. Yeah, pretty much. Okay. Sorry, so I'm really glad I mean, talented people can do amazing things here. Okay, uh, this one. Oh, yeah. How are you doing, kid? Well, one thing that's yeah, really interesting, if you do like this, Like you reset the mode. Yeah, it's like peekaboo, peekaboo. Okay, obviously, I have a lot of fun making this video. I can't wait to see what other PFX people are going to create with this. I actually have a couple of ideas and use Unreal Engine to generate backgrounds. Again, I think this is a game changer, regardless the haste towards AI. For me, this is a tool of creation. Please leave a comment to let me know if you had any problem with the installation. Also, let me know if you want more tutorials on Stream Diffusion. Like and subscribe and do all the stuff, right? Blah, blah, blah. And you know, See you next time.